Hey folks, welcome to another Broken Meeple review, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Okay, fine, I'll never do that again. Okay, a simple wrong would have done just fine, but... Uh... But this is basically a drafting game from a multitude of different uh, publishers that are doing this, but the main one being Lucky Duck Games, but you've got Ori Games, uh, La Boy de Jou, <laughs> and a few others. Basically, this is getting distributed quite uh, in a fair few locations around the world. But what this is, is a drafting game. So a very simple one at that. Essentially, you're in a kind of, I say, utopian dystopian future, but you have a hand of cards that you'll get every round, and you're trying to get the resources in order to make these, or to, like, to build them, in order to gain you various ways of getting points or more ways to produce. Producing being that you have five of these different colour resources, blue, green, grey, and a, few, a couple of others, and with these cards, you're hoping to be able to produce more of them each round, because producing the most gets you a bonus, but obviously you need the resources to build the cards. But the cards also have a dual use, which is that if you can't build the card for any reason, you can instead recycle it at the end of the round, which basically allows you to ditch the card and get a particular type of resource that's pictured on the card. The main crux of the game is a typical drafting game, a la Seven Wonders, Villagers, Sushi Go, you know the story. You have a hand of cards, and you'll pick one, put it in front of you, pass the cards around until they're eventually all used up, then you decide which ones you want to recycle, which ones you want to build, and then after you've, uh, when you produce each resource, the person who produces the most gets a little point bonus, basically re represented by a little token. Everyone collects their resources, builds what cards they've gone, and then you rinse repeat for a few more rounds until eventually the most victory points is the winner. Of course! Now if that sounded like a simplistic overview, that's because this game is pretty simple. I mean, the back says it's a one to five player game that goes for about 45 minutes. Not that inaccurate, actually. Does one to five players certainly fine, but it is about a 45 minute game. 60 minutes at absolute max if you've got AP players who aren't, you know, and it's your first game maybe. But it's a very quick drafting game. In fact, a bit quicker and simpler than I thought it was going to be. Because my first knowledge of this game existing was it appeared on a Kickstarter. And then as soon it's like, oh, we've got this big, huge version of the Kickstarter that everyone's getting. And I only got a retail copy for you know, the review because obviously I want to review the retail copy copies as often as possible and try not to get swayed by Kickstarter upgrades. But I thought, what else can you throw into this game when it's quite a simplistic drafting game? God knows. But I'm not talking about Kickstarter stuff here, I'm talking specifically about the retail copy. You get a bunch of cards in the box, some cubes for the resources, and a central board which is pretty superfluous at the end of the day. I mean, you can pretty much put the resources, as long as you get them in the right order, you can put them on the table in front of you and have some storage space nearby for the tokens. Whoopie doo, you don't really need the board. It's nicely produced, not gonna lie, but it's kind of not needed. You know, you've got your player board or card in front of you that says, I'm this corporation and this is what I produce and maybe a special like scoring condition. But other than that, you just basically need to have space in front of you for the various cards, which are these fairly large, fairly tall and very nice artistic cards. You know, they, they artwork on them is very good. Uh, the graphic design in them is uh, for the most part clear. We'll get onto that a bit later, but you've got the cost down the side, what it produces at the bottom and some other effects and some nice artwork on them. Although first negative, what theme? <laughs> it's a wonderful world and I don't give a monkeys about the world. It really makes no difference theme wise here. You are effectively drafting a bunch of cards, chucking some for resources and playing cards in front of you to get more ways to score or produce. That is it. What the name of the card, the setting that this world is in, you know, why you've got generals in one token and uh, I think advisors or something like that in another token. I, I literally can't remember the name of the token. It means so little. One's red, one's blue. That's pretty much it. Even the cards themselves, you know, oh, I can score extra if I get the blue tokens. I don't care what the name of it is. It's as long as it's the blue token. You know, the theme is pretty much non-existent here and that's a slight downer because looking at the box, which is an interesting cover and the idea that it's being sort of portrayed as this and the art to work being very good, I was kind of hoping for a bit more of a theme. Granted, games like Seven Wonders and that have the same problem, but you know, we've had those. I was hoping this would be something a little bit more new. 
That being said, good production quality does want the five players fine. You know, I mean, the drafting is mostly simultaneous, and you know, the 45 minute to 60 minute runtime is pretty accurate. So, this is definitely one to consider if you're thinking of getting into drafting. It's not as simple as something like, say, Sushi Go, but I would argue it's probably simpler than something like. I suppose maybe Seven Wonders. I think I would. I mean, Seven Wonders isn't that complicated, but you do have the different card sets, whereas this one is pretty much just what color of card it is, really. And yeah, I, mean, I dare say this is probably simpler to grasp than Seven Wonders for the most part. And, you know, it's definitely on that lightweight category of drafting games. Nothing particularly complex here, nothing particularly strenuous in terms of uh, decision making and choices, apart from just which cards do you want to recycle and which ones you want to build. You pretty much figured that out as you were going through the drafting. It's not like you get to that last step and go, oh, do I want to build this or do I want to recycle it? Well, no, you kind of knew that as you were going in, otherwise why do you take the card? Now, certainly there's not a huge amount to mention. I mean, there is a solo mode in this, which is not that interesting, really. I mean, it's it's kind of the same as what you would expect it to be. You know, you've got a, a way of getting points and you play in order to reach a certain target. It's okay. I mean, it's certainly a way to kick this out pretty quickly, but there's other games I'd probably rather play from a solo perspective. The two-player variant is very simply, instead of having seven cards in your starting hand, you start off with ten and you draft seven from them. So you don't end up with any more cards, you just have a little bit of extra choice. Not, I can't say I'm a, a huge of a fan of the two-player version either, though, for one good reason. The other three, four, five-player versions, which I say you're better off playing a three, four, five-player game, really, is that you have the seven cards. Your first hand is just seven, and then you get passed around the others as they're dwindling hands. So you've only got so many cards to pick from. So it, choices become a bit more restrictive, you know, it's a bit more tense as to, is that card going to come back round to me or not? I don't know. With a two-player game, you're drawing ten cards. So you have a lot to choose from to begin with, which if you've got an AP player is not a good thing. But also, you can bank on most of those cards coming back round because there's ten of them. You know, I might look at the starting hand and go, cool, there's five I would like. Well, there's ten cards there. There's a good chance I'm going to build at least three, if not four of them by the time it gets back. So... I think that it gives you a little bit too much flexibility or too much of a, you know, a loose, loose coil, I don't know, but you know, it, it just makes it a little bit too easy to get your stuff done in a two player game versus the multiplayer. Definitely, I'd say three to five player is where this game shines and I'd say three player is obviously the sweet spot because frankly, adding more players does nothing to the game other than add a tiny bit of tension for the production and of course, more time to the game because no matter how much simultaneous drafting is, well, simultaneous, you're still going to get that one player that you're waiting for. It's like, come on, come on, do, 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 and he's still taking his time. So definitely I'd say three players a sweet spot, four and five a sign. Now, it sounds all right, doesn't it? But there's a slight problem I have with this. The game just feels incredibly dry. And I mean super dry. I mentioned that this thing doesn't have much of a theme. That doesn't help. You know, other drafting games don't have a massive strong thing either, but they usually have some quirk or something interesting to kind of keep me coming back for more. This one doesn't seem to. I play it a few times and then, you know, trying to get through more times to get it obviously ready for review, I'm kind of hesitant to want to come back because there's no real unique quirk in this. You know, the whole thing of, oh, I've got resources to play cards, that's nothing new. The only slight tweak is that you've got the resources building in a certain order and the most production of a particular one gets that person a bonus point. Whoopee. I mean, yeah, you can't let someone run away with it, but it's going to kind of even out over players. You know, somebody's probably munching blue, somebody's probably munching green, somebody's probably munching white. And so unless you are letting one player run away with all five, in which case, what on earth are you doing? You know, it's going to even itself out over time. And there's not a lot you can do to stop someone getting those points other than playing a card that makes you produce more than them. But what cards come out is entirely there. And if you're literally taking a card purely so that you can stop somebody getting one point in a round, not that worth it, really. There's only so many rounds in this game. You're not, you're not getting enough points from those production bits to really cause much of a differential between players. Really, the points you're getting are from the cards. And that could be your um, initial scoring condition, or it could be the cards themselves, because the cards are worth VP, but they also might give bonus VP, like three for every blue, an extra one for every token. They're pretty generic scoring conditions, but you know, it's easy enough to understand. But it just feels 
dry, very dry. You know, I mean, it's meant to be a simple drafting game. I get that. And I don't think the game is bad in any way, shape or form. I, I would still recommend this to people who like drafting games and who want something simpler. But for me personally, it just wasn't singing to me. And a lot of that is possibly the slightly jaded thing that, that you've got to think about this. Not, I mean, on its own, it's a decent game. You know, I could happily say, if you like drafting games, go out and grab it. Well produced, cool. And probably has a lot of expandability in the future. But I've got to think about the market as a whole. Drafting games are kind of a dime a dozen now. There's a lot of them. And I own several in my collection that are considered lightweight. I have Seven Wonders fully expanded down there. I have Sushi Go Party uh, somewhere around here. It's one of those over there. And I have Villagers in the other room. So I've already got three light drafting games. And each one of them has a particular like quirk about it. Seven Wonders has got all the different sets of cards and all the expansions. Villagers had the cool quirk of building up those production chains and uh, you know having to get two different scoring phases and being able to tweak how long you wanted the thing to, uh, the round to last. But and also like paying other people's um, you know workers and stuff. And Sushi Go is you know pretty simplistic, but it's so simplistic that it is like my go-to drafting gateway game. You know, I want to teach people how to draft. I get Sushi Go out, and it's so easy to tell what you know people need, what cards are what because of the color graphic design on here. This one just doesn't feel like it has enough of a unique bone in its body to stand out in that crowd. I can't see what I would sort of go to this over those other drafting games. And I've just mentioned three. There's others out there that I don't own that I would still think, maybe I would still rather play them or maybe they're kind of on par, I don't know. And some of it maybe just the lack of a setting, maybe the lack of a theme does. But I think one thing that does irk me a little bit in this is the hate drafting element. In most drafting games, you should be able to hate draft to some extent. You know, I mean, even Harvest Dice I bang on about, you know, you can clearly see what dice is going to affect other players. In Seven Wonders, it's usually not difficult to see what cards the opponent wants because you can clearly see brown, grey, green, red, blue. You see what they need at the pink, like, literally in your peripheral vision, you can see that person wants red. Better be wary about the red card in my hand. Nice and easy. Sushi Go is a similar thing because they're color coded. Hmm, I know, I know, and she's got a lot of blues over there. The dumplings. Oh, do I really want to pass her a dumpling? Should I take it? Maybe not. You know, it's clear to see. Here, though, I don't think it's quite as clear cut, particularly with more players, because the as much as the cards are sort of color coded, that doesn't necessarily mean that they'll produce that particular resource or anything. But the resource cost down the left can be quite extensive. I mean, one of them could cost like five blue, a green, a black, and a red or something. I mean, that's a lot of resource costs. You can't block them from all of them. And because you can recycle any card for a resource and you're producing, it's not that easy to be able to tell, right, if I take this card, then I don't think he'll be able to get a blue resource to build that card. But hang on, has he got something else there that's going to uh, recycle? Oh, wait, he's producing one or two blue any round anyway. And um, not only is it harder to tell what they need, it slows the game down. Because if everybody is doing this, like taking the game a little bit too seriously for what it is, you know, a light drafting game, and is trying to analyze out specifically the cards to not give other players, it does drag things a little bit. It does grind to a halt. Especially when you're waiting for that one AP player who will overanalyze things, it's going to happen. So, you know, compared to... A, I'm not saying it's impossible to tell. I mean, uh, you know, when you start running out of cards and you've only got maybe two or three to pick from, you start looking and go, all right, well, hang on. I Yeah, they probably are going to want this card. I don't really care what I take from here, so fine, I'll take that one. You know, it gets a bit simpler. But in the first couple of drafting phases, when you've got about seven, six, five cards apiece, or in the two-player game especially, when you've got ten of these cards to pick from... You've only got so many means to actually hate draft, and even then, you kind of need to be thinking about your own situation a bit more than what the opponent is, because it's all right saying, well, I'll take this one, because then they can't get a blue resource. Oh, wait, I still need a yellow. Uh, you know, you end up shooting yourself in the foot a little bit too often. And so, you know, and on top of that, the replay value, I think, is a little bit under question. Granted, there's a Kickstarter version with a lot more content. Don't care, that's a Kickstarter version. And I'm sure this will get expansions in the future. But the cards you kind of rinse and repeat through, none of them feel unique. 
you look at this one, it's like the ruins of Atlantis or something. You look at this one, it's like a, a techno tank production facility or whatever. A, you don't care what the card is named, but B, the card is just simply X resources and possibly a scoring condition. That's it. None of them feel truly unique or stand out in any way. And I mean, if I play this game, you know, I played this game up plenty of times, solo and in multiplayer, and I still can't remember any actual name of any of the cards or any particular card that I go, oh yeah, that's a pretty cool card in the pack. Whereas in the others, I can. You know, I know exactly what all the Sushi Go categories do. I know exactly what the Seven Wonders cards do, including certain cards where I'm like, oh yeah, that's an annoying card in that one. Here, I can't remember a single thing. It just <clears throat> goes straight over my head and is blotted out, mainly because nothing feels distinctive about it. Now, it sounds like I'm ragging on the game a bit, and I don't half mean to, because as I said before, I think it's more of a personal thing that I'm not a fan of the game, but I don't say it's a bad game. Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> I don't say it's a bad game. You know, this is still a very light drafting game. It is very simple to learn. I mean, the rule book is very well written and you will easily like pick up and play this game and get into a drafting session. Great, we need more drafting games like that. It is well produced. Maybe a bit overproduced in certain ways, but it's nice to have big cards with decent artwork on them. It's better than having some bland, you know, barely any artwork at all sort of thing. And as much as I think it's super dry, some people aren't going to care about that. They just want a drafting game. And maybe some people will get into that whole production aspect. Certainly, I don't think you should really grab this if you're thinking of playing it solo or two player too often. I think it's better with the multiplayer. Uh, but yeah, it's a simple like drafting game and essentially just does what it says on the tin. It's not devoid of choices. I mean, you've got to think about what cards you're going to build and which ones you're going to recycle. That's interesting. You may not have as much of an issue, or sorry, much of an opportunity to hate draft as I would like, but you know, you, you can try and certainly there's going to be some of that there, but I just don't think it stands out amongst the competition to be one that I think anyone's going to talk about next year. I feel that this one's going to come. And it's going to go pretty swiftly, but it will you know, entertain a few people. And I'm, I know I'm hearing good reports from some reviewers out there. So, you know, there's a bit of a mixed bag uh, rece reception to this game. Personally, it's not one for me, I don't think. I don't think this is going to stay with me compared to other my uh, other drafting games. But I still think it's worth a shot for anybody who wants a very simple like drafting game. I think overall, I'm going to give this one a six. It's, you know, not one that I'm going to say, oh yeah, this one over lots of other drafting games, but if somebody said we wanted to play it, I'd be fine playing it, but it's definitely going to be one of those ones where I'm happy if it hits the table, but I'm not going to seek it out, I'm not going to be the one to request it, it's going to be that case of, alright, we need something to kill an hour or so, um, well, I happen to have a drafting game, it's a wonderful world. Yeah, you know what? Why not? You know, so I'm not going to be opposed to playing it, but I just don't think it's going to stand the test of time and certainly can't find a place in my collection. So that's It's a Wonderful World from Lucky Duck Games, Ori Games, The Blue De Jou. There's a lot of them on there. But, you know, it's not for me, but I reckon there's an audience for this out there. So by all means, if you like drafting and you want something lighter, then give it a shot and see what you think. So that's it for me. I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple video. And regardless of whether you think it's a wonderful world or a, a hollow hellhole of you know, depression and despair, it's still only a game. Take care, and I'll see you on the next review.